back we're finishing up circles part one lesson seven inscribed angles okay let's look at our theorem this is theorem 6.11 if a right angle is inscribed in a circle so we've got a right angle inscribed in a circle so let's call this angle c the right angle then the hypotenuse well the hypotenuse is a b is a diameter in the circle okay so a diameter we know goes through the center so let's call this circle O and that means the the center of the circle is on that segment conversely which means we're just reversing it if one side of an inscribed triangle is a diameter so if we know AB is a diameter then we would know that angle C must be a right angle so it goes both ways. If we know the angle, we can say we have a diameter. If we know we have a diameter, we know we have the right angle inscribed. Okay, so let's look at this. Angle or AC is a diameter. Whoops, it should be AB is a diameter, right? Not AC. AB as a diameter. Find the measure of angle C. Well, we know that if it's a right angle, it's got to measure what? 90 degrees. Okay, if angle A is 38 how do we find angle B well we use the sum of a triangle theorem and what do we know the sum of a triangle theorem says it says that all the angles add up to nine, uh, 180 so if this is 90 we know the sum of these two have to be 90 so let's take 90 minus 38 and that gives us 52 degrees so that means angle B measures 52 degrees so there's an application of that theorem Okay, let's look at this quadrilateral. A quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle if and only if its opposite angles are supplementary. Okay, so we have a quadrilateral. Inscribed means all the corners, or all the vertices of this quadrilateral actually lie on the circle. And that means that these opposite, that the opposite angles are supplementary. Well, supplementary means two angles add up to 180 okay and they have to be opposite so angle B is opposite angle D or P in this case okay so we're trying to find the variable P well we know this is 110 so we solve for P so that means P must be 70 degrees so angle P is 70 or the value of P is 70 that's angle D Okay, same thing happens here. A and C are opposite angles, and they have to be supplementary. So two angles add up to 180. We know one of them is 95. So what's the other one? The other one is Q. So let's solve for Q. So subtract 95 from both sides, so you get Q is 85. So the measure of, actually that should be the measure of angle C and the measure of angle D, but this is also equal to the variable P and the variable Q. Anyway, just some notation things. And there you go. So that's how you'd find those three angles. Now let me just show you why that works. Because if you understand why that works, it makes more sense. Okay, think about this. We have 360 degrees in a circle. And inscribed angles are half of the intercepted arc. So if I look at angle B, and that's 110, I know that the arc from A through D to C, so this arc has to be 220 degrees because I've got to double it. Okay, now I'm going to look at the other side. Here, this angle right here is 70. So the arc from A through B to C has got to be 140 because I double 70. Now notice these two arcs add to 360 because half of the inscribed angle adds to half of a circle. So hopefully that helps you see that the inscribed angle, well, when you have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle, you're encompassing the whole, tri uh, the whole circle. So that means that these angles on the inside would have to be half. Anyway, hope this video was helpful to finish up on lesson seven.